Us Dark Invincible! Us Dark Invincible! Hello and welcome to A Quest for Metal. That intro probably made you just dislike already, and that's cool. That's cool. But today we're going to be talking about the latest Cradle of Filth album, Existence is Futile. Now this album, I've been playing over and over and over and over and over again. I didn't just want to throw up a review straight away for this one, because Cradle of Filth is one of my favourite bands. Um, I've been listening to them since I got into metal. They're one of the bands that got me into metal, alongside Iron Maiden and Metallica. It's a weird mix, I know, but that's how I did it. <laughs> that's the journey of my life. Maiden, Metallica, Cradle of Filth. The Holy Trio. And, you know, when a new Cradle album comes, we have to fucking review it, because it's ingrained in our soul. And, oh boy, this one's fucking good. Right off the bat, this is a great goddamn album. I love pretty much all the fucking songs on here. We're going to go track through track, tell you my thoughts on every single song on the album, what's the best song, what's the worst song, and how I'd rate it overall in comparison with the rest of the discography. Because I have ranked them before, and I'll tell you in this video how I'd rank them um, at the end of the video. So, I guess, without further ado, let's get in with the first song, which is, you know, the typical Cradle Affair, where they do the symphonic -y, atmospheric opening, it's about a minute long. Then it kicks in with EXISTENTIAL TERROR! Oh my god, the chorus of EXISTENTIAL TERROR is just so catchy. It keeps, it keeps getting ingrained in my mind. Every time I'm, like, I'm driving to work, I'm doing the laundry, um, I'm having a wank, just... Existential terror just pops up into my head. I'm like, existential terror. Damn it. And oh boy, this song will make you spill ectoplasm all over the fucking walls. This is a great goddamn song. Heavy, intense. And that's the feeling I get throughout most of the album. It's a lot heavier album than previous affairs. It's still symphonic, but it's a lot less symphonic than some of the other albums. Um, compared to, you know, compared to Midian or Cryptorania, this is a lot less symphonic. This is more just riffy, more heavy, similar to Manticore, but I think the songs are way better on here than a Manticore. And Existential Terror is just proof of that. Great way to kick off the album. From Existential Terror, we then get into the more, you know, the, the classic ones after that, the two singles that they dropped, which is Necromantic Fantasies and Crawling King Chaos. These singles have been out for a while, but we're still going to talk about them. Necromantic Fantasies is a more typical-esque Cradle song on this album. It... It is more symphonic, it is more gothic, it is, um, the melodies on it. So goddamn serene. I really enjoyed um, Necromantic Fantasies. I think it's probably one of my favourites on the album. Just because it just sounds so, so cradle-like. It's the most cradle song on the album. Then we get into Crawling King Chaos, which I saw live when they played Bloodstock, which I fucking loved. Um, Apophis, reach dark office, Apophis. So catchy again with those fucking choruses. This album is just layered with those amazing choruses throughout every single song. Just like in Phonography. Hate Phonography all you want, the choruses fucking slap. Same on this album, but the songs are a lot heavier. And I love the vocal effect he has on Crawling King Chaos. It's like, Crawling King Chaos. Sounds nothing like that, but you get the gist. Very cool, very fast, very heavy. Fucking love it. Great single to sell the album. Great goddamn single. Then there comes like another little interlude kind of song, kind of throwaway. Then we get to black smoke curling from the lips of war. Fucking great with the poetic um, lyrics and the amazing song titles Cradle are. And this song is really good. It definitely showcases um, female vocals a lot more on this song. Annabelle's vocals are on full force on this song. A very evil, very ominous sounding, the vocals, and then it just gets, like, heavier and heavier, and then the second half of it just gets fucking insane. Like, the first half of it's, like, a different song, uh, more cradle-esque, and then the second half just gets, it's like a prog song, and the ending just gets, like, more intense and more intense and more intense, and it climaxes at the end. Holy shit, what a fantastically unique way to structure a song. And it has that riff leading up to it, which is like, down, 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 and it's like really creepy and eerie and it just sets the mood so well. That's one, that's, <laughs> I'm just clapping for the song. It's that goddamn good. And then we get to Discourse Between a Man and His Soul. Again, one of my favourites from the album. This is a lot slower, a lot more moodier and kind of like a ballad-esque kind of song for Cradle, but I love the deep, dark vocals 
on this song, and the, the whole Father right there. It's so beautiful. I love it. This is akin to, say, like, um, Her Ghost in the Fog. Um, more on the, you know, slower, uh, more methodical side of things. The melodies in here. Amazing, but again, those chorus. Father right there! Oh, fuck. Love it. Love it. You know when an album's good, when every song, you can, you know, you can picture it in your head, and you can think about the chorus, and think about the melodies in it, and that's what I get with these songs. This is a great palate cleanser of the album. You have this fast, intense shit, like we just mentioned with most of the songs, and you get to this one. It's a nice little breather. Nice little breather. I think it, and it's right in the middle of the album, so it splits it up really nicely, so... Definitely love the placement on this album and love the song fucking to pieces. Then we have Dying of the Embers, another fast, hard-hitting song with this kind of like waltzy, um, carnival-esque melody. It's like, doom, do 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 It feels like you're just dancing in hell. Um, that's the feeling this song delivers. Sorry if I sound bunged up, because I, cause I am. I need the devil to poke his trident on my nose so I can breathe properly. Uh, this song is another good one. It's probably my least favourite. I still really enjoy the song. It's technically fucking amazing. The drumming, the guitars, uh, even the melody, like I said, but, um, it's just probably my least favourite. Um, I can't say much more. It's a good song. It's just my least favourite on the album. Um, never skip it, though. Goddamn great song, but it's not one that I would instantly think of. You know, I'd think of Father Rifel and Necromantic Fantasies. Um, but not, I don't know, that's not the melody. That's not the melody, Questy. But I wouldn't think of this one. Then there's another little interlude, and then it goes to How Many Tears to Nurture a Rose. Oh my god, this may be one of the best songs they've ever written. Fucking hell. The melody on here, serene. Great, and Danny's vocals, where it's like, The sadness is over. Oh my god, the emotion in the vocals. The fucking riffing behind him works in tandem so well. And the end part, the ripping solo, the solos in here are oh, so sweet. Uh, his vocals shine on this song. The musicianship shines on this song. It's just a shiny song altogether. Then it leads into probably, I know I've said this for a lot of songs, but this might be my favourite song on the album. Suffer Our Dominion. Suffer Our Dominion. This is where Hellraiser opens it up and he's talking about nature and it's a song about you know global warming which can feel forced at times when bands do but i like it in this sense and he's like you need to suffer our dominion because uh, if nature gets you she will be fucking brutal and then it just kicks him with a fucking riff oh my god amazing way to start off the um the song i mean hell raises talking at the start how can you not enjoy it and suffer our dominion the chorus for that oh yeah oh yeah it's a catchy, it's a catchier than COVID. Pity the poor creatures that suffer a dominion. Oh, yeah, another banger. Then it leads on to the final song of the album. I start shedding a tear at this point because it's the catchiest song on the album. Um, I do prefer Suffer a Dominion, but this is still the catchiest song of the album. It's kind of like a less cheesy version of Temptation uh, with the chorus on this, but it's so fucking fun and I love Temptation. Us dark, invincible. Us dark, invincible. <laughs> it has that very just... I feel like they're just going to be like singing this while walking towards you really slowly and one guy's like clicking his fingers. They're about to like pounce and start jiving on me. <laughs> it's amazing. Catchy song on the fucking album. What a way to close off the album. Um, I love it. So yeah. Um, all in all, this album's a fucking banger. It's probably one of the favourites of the year, and it's probably easily gonna be in my top ten of the year. Yeah. Easily. Cradle knocked out of the park. Now where would I rank it? Oh, I need to give a score. That's what we do in reviews, Questy. It's been a long time, alright? Um, I'm gonna give it a 9.5 out of 10. Yeah. And if we're doing it out of 5s, it's a 4.5. Uh, I, I adore it. It's not quite on the level as Dusk in Her Embrace or Cruelty and the Beast. But it's fucking up there. It's goddamn up there and it's one of my favourites. And if I was going to rank it, it would probably be either third or fourth. Now, I don't know if I like it more than Damnation on a Day. Loads of people hate that album. I don't know why. It's it's so bombastic. Bombastic? It's so bombastic. And um, they got like an orchestra and shit for it. And I really enjoy that. Be my mannequin. But I don't know if I like it more than that. 
and I, I have fond memories of phonography, so maybe it's fifth, but fuck it, it's probably better than both of them. You know, like, objectively-wise, it's probably better. For, you know, for me, though, fifth. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it's going to be fifth on my ranking for now, and it's only, it's only like, the first week it's been out, so I'm sure in a couple of weeks it's just going to be like, nope, it's my favourite, it's my fucking favourite. So, Existence is Futile by Cradle of Filth. Have you listened to it? What did you think? What song's your favourite on the album? Let me know down below, and we'll see you again on another quest for metal. Uzdak! Invincible! Uzdak! Invincible!